Shout out to Drew. Holding it down. Kyle. Mike. Drew. Everybody's out here lifting at lifting heavy ass weight. I'm not even ready. I came without pre. Everybody's out here lifting heavy ass weight. That was so fucking pussy. Oh my god. Kyle's bench is still shit. <laughs> oh fuck. So it's mad late. It's uh, it's around 11. Uh, I didn't expect uh, the guys to be here, but actually 10:45. Ah, so we're going off course a little bit um, because the uh, it's Friday. Today's supposed to be my rest day, but uh, tomorrow's just jam packed. I got some with my sister going on, uh, and then we got uh, we're doing like a team dinner uh, for sushi later into the evening so i'd rather like today was already a long day uh like super super long day um was finishing up programming and stuff like that the client that i said i had um gotten in the last video um we're working together for six months minimum of six months uh with uh hopes to continue to work together in the future so both uh training and nutrition um, so I was doing that over the weekend as well as the uh, as the other client I got for three months So just working on that all day Doing stuff around the house, etc, cetera, etc cetera. Um, All boring stuff, laundry And yeah, so I pulled the plug in terms of just coming tonight So it was a super long day So I was like, fuck it, let me just take some pre and come tonight And uh, just sleep in the morning instead of like I'm already tired from the day And then I'd have to wake up super early tomorrow I got some for my sister at like noon, and then we're going out to dinner at like five, six. So instead of like waking up at like seven thirty, eight, coming to work out, going home to shower, it would have just rushed my Saturday. So I'd rather take the hit today, rest tomorrow, and then uh, Sunday would be the same uh, ordeal. Just kind of rolling with the punches. It's not too bad. Like I said, uh, today was supposed to be the rest day. Tomorrow was supposed to be the workout, but uh, it's not the end of the world. It's not like I missed today and tomorrow. So. Will it be a shitty workout? Will it be a good workout? I don't know. We're here hitting legs. Yeah, all the guys are here because it's so motivational. Um, you know, like team lifts type of shit. It's helping out. But uh, we're in the middle of a fucking ice storm right now. I almost bust my ass three times out of the house twice coming into the fucking gym. Gotta love New York. Um, but yeah, shout out to Drew big time holding it down with the pre. Because um, I came in, I was like, fuck it. I'll stay disciplined. But I saw the guys and I was like, fuck. Started getting funny. And then I knew Drew takes the same pre that I used to take, the P Science, prolific. So I was like, let me cop a scoop. Held it down. Now let's warm up for squats. All right, I just completely forgot I'm recording tonight. Um, so the numbers I, or the working sets for tonight are four doubles at an eight. Uh, one, what was that, 130? Yeah, 125, 130. Yeah, 130 moved uh, relatively quick. I did it for a double. Uh, Kyle was like, that moved good. So I was gonna go 140, but uh, I'm just gonna try. I'm gonna try 150. If I can maintain 150 for like what feels like an honest eight, uh, I'm gonna keep it there for the four doubles. Um, yeah, I just work at those rates. I was just talking to Kyle a little bit about like um, basically what I was talking about with Drew in the last video about like coming back to to the later night shifts. Um, just because the energy now, uh, more people are signing up. The gym's growing, so like obviously as the gym grows, people are gonna join. Yeah, see, like Kyle's like fucking doing the dumbbells. <laughs> yeah, it's just there's new crowds coming to the gym. It's just the brand is growing, so like as as it generalizes, you're gonna reach more of a general population of people. Um, but what stayed true is for a while, like we. The night shift used to be, it should be me, Kyle, Mike, Drew, um, and there were a few more heads um, for the most part that like we constantly came at night. But then my schedule got busy, Kyle's got busy, me and Kyle jumped to the morning, Drew kind of stayed late at night. So like now we're all kind of back in this uh, late night shift. So I was talking to Kyle, he comes between like 9 and 11, Drew's from like 9 on, Drew can be here till like 1 o'clock in the morning. So I think we're going to all start linking up again. Uh, so far, so good. This is like the second session I have with Drew. And then Mike and Kyle back in the picture. Everything's going good. Uh, we're going to start the first set of doubles now. 
right after Drew knocks out 374. Yep. Oh my god, bro. Oh, so Drew's, Drew's trying to get Aki. Aki. <laughs> All right, let's knock out this double and let's get it moving. The weight definitely moved good. I think more than anything, I'm just not confident with my form just yet. It feels like extremely light, but I'm overthinking the movement for no reason. I'm just like really like, does my grip go here? Am I high enough on my traps? Am I low enough on my back? Are my, uh, are my feet wide enough? Like I'm literally thinking about that, executing the whole movement. And it's just bullshit. Like, cause I left the movement long enough to relearn them, but now it's like I'm getting fucking tight because I know I can handle this weight, but I'm just not confident enough yet, but I gotta give it time, I gotta be patient with it. I'm gonna keep it here for the four doubles. I just kind of force and put that pressure on myself to keep it at an eight. Um, in terms of load and how heavy it felt, definitely an eight. In terms of execution, could use some work, but it's not like so shitty, because I'm sure it looks great on camera, but yeah. We're gonna push it, we're gonna see. We're gonna stay within pocket. I'm really not gonna break the mold if I'm not like consistently pushing the boundaries. Um, even though this was once a standard, now I gotta push again because we, learned, we left it for a little while. Same difference though. Drew went up and wait. Let's see if we can knock it. Cool. Yikes. Some spooky stuff happening tonight. Okay, workout is done. Uh, you saw the last two sets of squats, they were like, eh. They're like, they were a little more of a struggle than the first two sets, so that's why I kept it at 150. Um, so what I was telling Drew, Kyle, and Mike, that um, the weight doesn't feel like an eight, and this may not make sense to some of you. The weight feels moderate at, at, at in, in its worst, but given the way I'm technically executing the movement i'm not confident i'm not in position so it wouldn't make sense for me to jump up in weight whereas that weight is easily handled if i jumped up to something that felt like an eight in terms of like the load and the yeah the load and the weight felt like an eight and i didn't technically execute it it's a heavier load so the margin for me to get injured is a lot higher now the weight that i was doing today um at 150 it felt like a five or six on the back given with the execution of the movement it was like an eight by the time i got to the third and fourth set so that's why i picked that number and kept it there because 140 would have been too light i think 150 was right there um definitely a good two ish left in the tank uh like a squeamish third if I was able to uh, pull it off. But like I said, I'm not looking to shoot for the stars right now. For the month of February, it's gonna be a relatively honest block. It's not gonna be, um, is that gonna balance? It's gonna be a relatively honest block. It's not gonna be 
anything shooting for the stars. It's uh, honest work for the month of February, getting eating back in check, um, at least a lot cleaner. Not like eating out, not like counting macros to that extent where I'm just like, uh, like not going out, not enjoying things. But for the majority of the week, I wanna make sure at the very minimum, I'm getting my protein numbers in, um, which we're shooting for two, 200. See where it leaves us. And uh, starting March, we really push the envelope in terms of strength and stuff like that. And then come around March is when I make a decision of whether I wanna step on stage or not again. Do I wanna compete? Yeah, absolutely. Do I wanna compete this year? That's a little undecided. Only because me personally, um, and again, you guys will know as, I, as videos come out, what I'm going through this year, I've already revealed to you the first jump that I made at the end of last year into this year, which was leaving a full-time position. Now, leaving a full-time position doesn't necessarily mean like, oh my God, I freed up that much more time. Because the, th the thing with, what a lot of you guys don't understand and why a lot of you guys are not, um, like it's all in theory, it's all in talk. Like, oh, I, I work for myself, I do this, I do that. On paper, it's great. And like from a social standpoint, it's like, yeah, you work for yourself, but the, the brutal, the brutal fucking reality of all this stuff is, is you really don't have anybody over you. In terms of like, let's just say a regular job, just whatever, corporate union, whatever the fuck you're doing, versus like you being your own boss. Cause being self-employed is just, you are, like your clients are your bosses, right? Now, what do I mean by that? If you, like at, at a regular job, you have a employee, uh, employer, a boss, a uh, manager, or this or that, um, that you get direction from, you take orders from, et cetera, et cetera. They give you the layout for the day, the week, the month, numbers, yearly, the whole nine, right? You're basically told what to do. When you're jumping into a self-employment role, it's kind of hard because if you don't have that discipline, which is why most don't make that jump to the self-employment route, it's because you, your clients, your customers, whatever, are your boss. Now, the, uh, the concept behind that is, is if I'm, I'm, I'm providing a service now for people, right, for training and stuff like that, if I don't provide and I'm not pushing myself uh, daily and this and that, like, I can't, there's no clocking in. Like, I'm purely, and for most self-employed, you're not clocking in. You're, you're literally, you gotta wake up every morning and earn your money. Not that you're not earning it at a corporate job or a corporate structure, but no one's pushing me. No one's waking me up in the morning and is like, hey Johnny, clock in, we gotta do this. You just go through the motions, right? That's why like the whole, like for people who have went to school and they're like, oh, you know, like they've graduated and they have a regular job, they're like, oh, I wish I didn't go to school and I didn't go the employment, uh, or I, and I went the self-employment route. It's not really all that, it's not all that great as people make it out to seem. It's really not fun at all. Um, but the way I see it is life sucks regardless. Choose your suck. That's my. That's one of my sayings. Um, but it's really hard because, you know, like when I was growing, you know, through this phase that I'm doing now, and thankfully I'm able, I was able to make the risk I made, you're not really... It, it's not fun when you don't know where your next paycheck's coming from. It's not fun when you don't know necessarily what path you want to go in life and this and that right because a lot of times you follow your hobbies but then when you put a ch when you attach a check to a hobby or like a payroll to a hobby it almost doesn't become fun and if you can't draw that line in the sand you kind of like uh you almost like kill the hobby right because that, that was my that was my thing with cars i used to do detailing i stopped doing it because i used to love doing detailing for my cars uh, my friends' cars, family's cars, all that, the whole nine. Just whoever was close to me, I took care of their cars. But then, like, when I started making money, and I made good money doing it. But, like, it almost, like, it, I lost the, like, the love for it, the passion for it. Even though I was making good money, I was going to lose a hobby that I was so uh, dear and near to that I just dropped it completely. I, I didn't want to, you know, like, will I go back to in the future? Not sure. That's, again, that's whatever down the line. So I, I, le I left, I stopped doing it. I stopped doing it for money, I stopped doing it, I went another route. Um, and now the difference is like when you're going to school, like you have an itinerary, you have a, 
what do they call that shit? It's almost like a syllabus for life, right? You go to school, four years, get whatever degree, you get out, you do your internships, and boom, you have a job for a set amount of time. Now, the reason why people go that route is because it's more comfortable. You have someone telling you what to do. Now, if you go the entrepreneur route, whatever you want to call it, self-employed, being your, whatever the fuck you want to call it, it's all the same shit. It's like, you, you, there is no layout. If you don't game plan, if you don't uh, write stuff down, if you don't, or if you don't, like, whatever your method is, if you don't have a set vision in terms of, like, what direction you want to go, you're just not going to go anywhere because you just wake up and go through the motions and you're working a regular job, probably minimum wage, and it kicks you in the ass and it's demotivating until you find, like, that one thing that you go big on. That's why they say, like, right, be a part of, like, five or six businesses and then, the, you know, like, the one bit, the one thing is going to make you go big. Right, like fail at five or six things and like the sixth thing is gonna make you go big. That's another saying that's like out there. But if you don't have that guidance and why most people don't go that self-employed route and then eventually as a business owner and then into an investor, if you don't make that jump, because that jump is pretty much, it's, it's a confidence jump. It's, it's taking what you know, understanding that you can provide a value that maybe some can't or you can do it better or you could do it better in some way, shape, or form. Not necessarily in terms of a quality, but like care, whatever. Just better, betterment being a general term. Provide a value, do it better, make money with it, and then just get smart with it. That's like the the general jump from employee um, to like being self-employed. It's it's the same route, but it's a it's a lot. The pressure is is really fucking high right now on me. Um, not really in a bad way. I like it. It's pushing me to do a lot more. Um, in terms of what I'm doing this year, like this year's already wrapped up for me. Like that's how, in a nutshell, everything is. Now, like not the finite details are not planned out, but for what's to be done this year is all is all associated with um, where I want to move, what directions I want to move with fitness, uh, personally and both now in a business aspect. And in the car world, right, I have, you guys don't know anything what's going on with that stuff. So, like, I'm going to start introducing that as well. And it's just, it's really, it's, you know, like, my best advice, like, even if you've gone to school, haven't gone to school, you're working a dead-end job, like, whatever it is you want to do, like, just really, like, just let go of whatever you let got to let go of, make amends, whatever you got to make amends with, and just, like, really start doing what you want to do. There's nothing wrong if you went to school. There's nothing wrong if you're a dropout. I, I don't think it's fair because I come from a line of, uh, my parents didn't go to school. Dad's an immigrant. Um, and mom, I'm, I'm pretty sure mom just couldn't afford to go to school if I'm being completely honest, if you want me to be completely transparent. So growing up in that leadership of a household, it was go to school. Um, being a sibling of four, first one to drop out, it's really hard, right? Like, not growing up properly, getting in trouble, being generally the outcast of the family. It's definitely not fun going against the grain, but like fast forward, and like, I use that term lightly fast forward because it felt like, like days felt like fucking weeks in terms of like when I was trying to figure out and I just kept hitting dead ends, you know, trying to figure out when the next paycheck was coming from, where it was coming from, how much it was. Um, it's hard, it's hard. You're doing anything for money. And uh, that's probably you know a story for another day in terms of all that stuff. But it's not as pretty as people make it seem in terms of like going your own route and stuff like that. It's hard. But I mean, the discipline that it takes to go your own route, often, more often than not, you know, now I really don't give a shit about like what you're doing, what people think of me, this and that. And I'm not saying that as like an egotistical, like, oh, I don't care what anybody thinks about me. Because we all care to a certain extent what people think about me. But at the end of the day, you get just that much more of a confidence when you step out on your own. When no one, right, like do it in the dark when no one's clapping for you. It's why like I train at night when no one's around. I mean, minus the guys that were here. It's one o'clock in the morning and I'm talking to a camera right now giving advice. So I really don't, you know, when it comes to that stuff, I mean... We really think we're the main character in everybody else's story, and it's just, it's just not the, it, it's the brutal truth is you're not. As important as you were to a friend, um, a significant other, or this or that, anybody can change up. And it sucks, and I mean, it's, it's life, it happens. 
you just have to understand as a mature adult um, or mature individual, and it was a learning curve for me that you're, you are not the center of anybody else's life. You have to be the center of your life. You can't be the center of his life, her life, that life. That, like it, It's your life, you're responsible for your decisions. Every wrong, every right, every fuck you that's been handed to you and every fuck you that you've handed out, you're responsible for. Um, and it's, it's just a grow, it's a constant growing phase that a lot of people won't uh, grab and play victim to all that stuff. And that's why, to a certain extent, I say most of the times, take fault in everything. Always take the responsibility, even when it's not your fault. At least it gives you an answer. It gives you an opportunity to learn. And it gives you an opportunity to grow. That was a tangent. But I think, uh, yeah, a lot of things, uh, a lot of bright things going on, a lot of good things going on. Hopefully the winter ends soon. The season of depression around here is fucking real. But we're gonna wrap this one up. It's gonna be a short video because this is more of like what was on my head in terms of like what's been going on in my personal life as of recently. All good stuff, um, a lot of pressure, but just all good stuff. Um, it's stuff that's pushing me to learn and grow as an individual, as a business, as a future business owner. Um, just the whole nine, it's fun. Um, I'm trying not to look at things as like, why me? And like, okay, let me like, you know, when a situation is given to me, it's not like, why me? It's, it's almost like, why not me? If that makes any sense. I'm not like looking at the situation like, why is this happening to me? I'm looking at it as like, okay, this happened to me. How can I make a chocolate cake out of lemons that's been handed? You know, or like whatever. You're given exactly what you're able to handle. Nothing is thrown at you that you can't handle. So if you think life is getting tough and it's shit's getting thrown at you and you can't understand why, it's because you're probably getting pushed to the next level. You're getting pushed to get trusted with more. And you're not gonna be given stuff you can't handle. If shit's getting hard, buckle the fuck up. It's only gonna get harder. That's my best advice. That's the only advice I'll give in terms of like growing as an individual. It's just, it, it, you have to go through it. You have to get the fuck ups. You have to, you're gonna lose friends. You're gonna lose significant others. It's, it, it is literally like, just grow, learn from your mistakes and you're not gonna please everybody. You gotta please yourself. You gotta make the tough decisions. Otherwise they're gonna make you and you're gonna lead a shitty life. And I'm not, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not looking to lead a shitty life. So rant over. Thank you all for checking in. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Do you guys like the, like these talks? Or should I just keep it raw with the workouts and the fun stuff? This is who I am deep down in terms of like how I decipher stuff. I'm very, uh, very methodical, very mental, very like whole mindset E type of person. It's my strongest suit in the gym as well, so in terms of like mentally connecting with stuff. If you guys like this stuff, smash the thumbs up button. You guys are killing it, by the way, with the thumbs up. I know exactly who you guys are. Um, I, can't, I can't express the support um, and the love like nearly enough. I can say thank you in every video and you guys will not understand that like, um, I'm happy that like I, I made the jump I made because like I wanna start doing the things I wanna do. And like when it's just, it's literally, Compound effect. Hashtag John Maxwell. Uh, that's a very good book. Read it a couple years ago. Which is a domino effect, right? Just like positive affirmations. Just one good thing happening after the other. Supporting your friends. Know who's supporting you. Just constantly doing right by yourself. Staying true to yourself. I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, like I'm one person when I'm not like, this is me. I don't, you know, like this is who, if, you, if you're if you very good friends with me, this is like, I'm very, I'm very Gandhi. I'm very overthinking type of person, you know? So like, this is it. And I'm also watching like a really weird movie. That's just like, I'm very like casing. <laughs> That's fine. It's, oh my God, it's 12.54. All right, we're gonna go home. We're gonna get some food. This video is done. Comment, like, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.